Hi guys, Righteous Raymond here, author of Gaslit, Escaping the Narcissist Pit. And you all, I'm not doing a quote of the day. I'm going to do a 10-minute video about um, how some how you can easily tell if there's a narcissist in your life. You don't have to, you know, read the whole book to know. I'm going to give you all a really quick, really quick litmus test. Um, how to tell if you are with or engaging with or dating a narcissist. So... Um, there's this thing I gave me called the Word Wide Web. You know about the World Wide Web, www.righteousdrama.com. But there is the Word, W-O-R-D, Word Wide Web. And so, the thing to know is that people can use words like spiders, you know, make webs or whatever. And the purpose of their word is to trap you. So, the way to know if a person's a narcissist or a gaslighter or not is how they use their words. Watch how they use their words, okay? So, some people use their words um, to do positive things, such as to um, connect with people, to bring understanding, to you know clarify things to people, to bless people. Hey, I bless you. God bless you today. To teach you something. Hey, let me teach you something about how to you know do your taxes. Um, how to, they, some people use their words to forgive or to entertain or to warn people, okay? So some people use their words for positive means, okay? And most narcissists do not use their words for positive. Now they may in the beginning in the love bombing stage, they might, you know, tell you a lot of positive things about, they may talk about how great you look and they, you know, after such good people. But when the mask slips, when the mask falls off of the narcissist, you're going to know that you are not dealing with a good person. So... Like I said, people who are good, normal people, they use words to do positive things like bless and encourage, teach, help, you know, exhort, encourage, things like that. But toxic people like gaslighting to narcissists, they use words to do negative things, okay? Again, not even at the first few days, weeks, or months when they're gaslighting you, but you will see their mask being the and you start to see them do things such as using, yeah, such as using their words to confuse you. Um, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You're losing it. You're going crazy. They use their words to confuse you, deceive you, intimidate you. Man, I beat you. Man, I... They threaten you. That's how people in Memphis talk. Man, I hit you in your eye. Man, I... You know, they use the words to threaten you, intimidate you, curse. Man, I curse. I curse. I pray that, you know, you. I, I hope that God kill you in a car accident. They use their words to curse you. We use the words to slander. Oh, you know so-and-so. You know she cheating on her husband. Lying on you, slandering you, humiliating you, trying to control you. So, good people or just normal people, they use their words to do positive things. And yes, even good people sometimes use our words for evil. So sometimes we get out of character and we say mean things. And we may have said it. That was kind of mean. But we don't make a habit of using negativity with our words, okay? But a narcissist pretty much only uses their words. I'm going to make it clear. Um, narcissists use their words to do such negative things as confuse, deceive, intimidate, curse, slander, reject, humiliate, hurt, or control. Narcissists are extremely skillful at, will at weaving their words together, much like how a spider weaves together a web. Both spiders and narcissists' webs are sick in that they trap people until they wrap them up to immobilize them before sucking the life out of them. So, you all, watch how you use your words, okay? Now, you may have, we may say, well, I'm not a narcissist, I'm not a gaslighter, but still watch how you use your words because you could be doing the same work as a narcissist, okay? Um, we should not use our words for evil. We should not cunningly piece together words in order to lure people into dangerous traps. We should not use our words against innocent people in, or, in order to take advantage of them. We should not use our words to control people's minds. People have a right to be happy and free in their minds, even if we cannot benefit from it. Another way I want you to look at your words is look at your words as weapons or tools. It can be tools, which is positive, you know, like, you know, a boost to lift somebody up or, you know, crank a car, you know, jump off of somebody's car. That's a tool. Um, you know, you, you know, it's using like using your words as like positive tools. But I mean, sometimes you can use your words as as weapons, negative tools like weapons, um, arrows, words, daggers, bullets, machetes, mallets, handcuffs, prisons, chains, etc. Your words can be used like weapons. You can like like let's say a mother tells a child, "I wish you never been born." Now that's like a dagger because it's like somebody's really, only somebody who's really close to you can get you with a dagger. So you're like. With your mom, you have an argument with her, and she stabs in the chest. I wish I would have boarded you when I had the chance. That's a dagger to your heart. Um, an arrow, of course, is a weapon that is shot from a long distance away. See, so maybe somebody you had heard a rumor. Yeah, so and so, it's my, it's somebody at your old job said you was X Y Z. So it's coming from a long distance away, but it still does damage to you. Of course, a machete is a butchering. Like, imagine your husband telling you, "I'm in love with your best friend." 
That's a dagger. That's like a machete. They will like just they will just dishevel you. Um, you use the words to control people like handcuffs and prisons. Use it right. If you leave me, I'll kill you. You leave me. If you ever divorce me, I'm gonna kill you. So then the words are like arresting you. So now you're like feel like you're trapped in their home or they're you know, like you're a prisoner. But then again, you all we want to use our words for positive things such as um, our words can be used as healing agents like light, hugs, tickles, kisses, healing balm, warmth, or medicine. That just sound that just sounds good to say that. If somebody uses their words to be healing agents like light, someone's telling you, you know what? You're gonna make it. I don't know what you've been through, how I'm gonna it's been a bad year for you or not, but you're gonna make it. I believe in you. I, I know you're gonna make it, you got what it takes. This is not gonna get the best of you. It won't always be like this. You got what it takes, girl, girl you you gonna win. You you're a winner. You're a winner. You know what I'm saying? It's somebody telling you something about yourself. It's like a healing in your body. Someone makes a joke. You know, it's like a tickle. Tickle make you laugh, make you feel better. Um, warm. You know, I love you. You mean so much to me. I value you. You're an amazing individual. Those are like positive ways to use your words. Versus somebody saying, I hate you, I despise you, I want you to die, I want to kill you. You see, imagine somebody using their words to hurt you. And so that's a quick way to know if a person's a narcissist or not. When you talk with them, after the conversation with them, how do you feel after the conversation with them? I talked with the person recently, the person was upset with me. And this person, y'all, for 17 straight minutes, I'm talking about daggers, bullets, stabs, slashes, and I just sat there just quietly because I've been watching videos about how to talk with the narcissist and I said Mr. just sit quietly let them talk say you anything else you want to say they went on a little bit longer and this you want to say a little bit longer and so they use their words to cut and stab and hurt and harm and wound and I said okay this person is a narcissist I didn't know it at first but I found out by the end of the conversation because I had to use their words and I had to say you know what miss him upset with how things worked I don't like how that situation played out but I respect your choices God bless you. That's a good person, a good person. They use the words to heal, to help, to encourage. But when a person, if you're talking to the phone with the person or in, or in person with the person, and you do the conversation feeling like your heart, like when I talk to this person was talking to me, y'all, after like my stomach, like, seeing up in my heart being like a million, like a million pounds per minute, uh, I was like, oh my, beats per minute. I was like, oh my God, this person's like, there's like an anger, you know, and vitriol towards me. And so this person is not a person I want to spend my time with because they use their words for evil. They may not be a narcissist. They may not be a gas adder necessarily, but they don't know how to use their words. Well. They can just be a toxic person. Everyone who's toxic is not a narcissist. Some people are just toxic. Some people always make little harmful little jabs and jokes. You, it's your favorite shirt, ain't it? You're going to wear your hair there forever, ain't it? You drive, a, you drive what kind of car you drive? You live in what neighborhood? You know, they always make these little comments. like that's a, So that's not like a stab, but it's more like a, a pen pick or a paper cut. You know, it still hurts. Like I said, narcissism it's the death of a thousand paper cuts. Sometimes people don't have any big weapons. Sometimes they have a sheet of paper. They have a little slash here or there. And you put alcohol, you need to put some hand sanitizer on, you put a sting in your hand, you're like, what's that? What's a little cut on my finger, cut on my hand? So sometimes some narcissists don't use like big weapons. Sometimes they just use small little comments, small little jabs. But if you do enough of those little jabs, the little razor cuts, it does leave scars, you know what I'm saying? So spend your time with people who use their words for good and not evil. And you work on it as well. Sometimes you all, we use our words. Sometimes we talk about people like a dog. They might not even hear us. They might not even be around and hear us saying it. But y'all, we shouldn't use our words. We should use our words to encourage people. Even if they're going through a situation, they're a bad person. That's that person you know got rest for DUI. Don't be like, hey, that's what she get. Hey, that's what she get. Just, just say, man, that's so unfortunate. I'm glad it wasn't me because I know I've drunk and drive a few times. And I'm glad it wasn't me. That You know, like, show, show compassion to people. Use your words for positivity because, you know, you send out arrows in the spirit, arrows, daggers, uh, paper, you know, razor cuts. Just be positive with your words. Don't be like the narcissist. You don't want to be comparable to a narcissist because you use your words for evil. So again, when it comes to the word wide way of use your words to weave positive, positive things, not negative um, traps to trap people, to hurt people, okay? Use your words. Watch yourself for the next five interactions with people. Are your words used to uplift, encourage, help, bless? Or your words used to tear down and slander and ruin people's reputations, okay? So, again, are you a spider? Are you like the narcissist? Do you use your words to create wicked, word-wide webs? And you know how spiders do. They trap the fly, spin a thing around the fly, and then they suck the life out of the fly. They suck the blood out of the, out of the flower or the, whatever bug they're, they're food into their trap. Don't be like that, you all. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Book on Amazon, guys. Bye.